Hello and this is Bradley. This is a fundamental tutorial, but uh, we are also going to make some presets. Today I'm going to talk about parenting in animation nodes. This is something simple that I would like to mention a long time ago, um, and I finally have time to discuss this, so let's start. So here's a procedural weaved iron chain that I've made in the past. Um, if you're interested, you can take a look uh, from the link in the description or right upper corner. Uh, a demonstration is also uploaded on this channel, so whatever. What I would like to say is, although uh, animation node is initially designed as a motion graphic tool uh, for Blender, its not a, its function is not only limited to motion graphics, but also procedural modeling or whatever kind of things that you can potentially imagine. Um, basically, the procedural stuff that you can think. The example here is just like uh, I use animation or to generate kind of architecture related kind of stuff. And here's one thing that I would like to remind you is it's beca uh, the be because um, animation node decides how the mesh will be formed. And once you output an object, um, its origin will always be set to the wood origin. In such a case, what will actually happen is if you try to only affect the origin, like you will move that, then initially it seems fine. But if you try to re-execute the node tree, then everything will be re-updates and it will be reset to the original form. But uh, now you can see the object has been lifted up is because the transform is not something that will be affected due to this change. So you can easily move these objects. You can even add a modifier and you can even parent that to another object. For example, let's choose our controller, which is an empty object. And uh, I can use the controller to move our target object, which is the weaved iron chain. So in such a case, you don't necessarily have to worry about anything. You can do, you can just use that as a normal object, except for it, the mesh itself that you have to only change through animation nodes. So what's the point of this tutorial? The point of this tutorial is that um, this is one way you do you get objects from animation node, but uh, there are also other times it's not the way we're working. So here's another example that I have a, a not generator and instance on spline. Both of the presets are mentioned in my other tutorials, so you can also take a look to them if you're interested in. Um, and here I'm using a spline generated from the not generator to ins as a guide to instance the object. And just with these many nodes, um, two of them are presets, uh, you can get a kind of a flowery pattern with the cube and its procedural with ma as many cubes as you wish. Kind of simple and straightforward. And assume this is more kind of a decoration of the room or whatever kind of stuff. I think it's also kind of interesting thing to think about. But the question is, in such a case, because these are two different spline, one is not and the other has been used to instance spline. The movement of not will not affect the other splines. And in order to make our object to move, I have to use the offset matrices. And change the location. So firstly, in this case, you can see uh, what actually happened is there is a breakage of linkage between these two. The other thing that you, I would say is, um, assume this is a complex thing. Uh, move this thing in such a parametric way is not something desired. Because just to try to feel the difference between a move with such kind of value compared to just a GZ or a GX, GY, such kind of movements. Um, the manipulation within the viewport and the manipulation with the value in the node is a very different feeling. And the more importantly, there is a breakage in the linkage of these two. So the question is, how should I actually parent the objects to the other in such a kind of a situation? A third example is here is a node tree that's from the last uh, um, bridge machine tutorial. 
where I have basically around uh, around one, two, three, four, four offset matrices to achieve the function that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but of course, these uh, four offset matrices uh, each have a different uh, functions. Some is for local transformation on local access, some is for global transformation on global access, and so on and so forth. And um, despite the fact that it's a kind of a little bit um, confusing, uh, what I would like to say is if there is a chance that you can parent that to an object, uh, the movement will be much easier. And here is a, a node that I, uh, a preset I created for myself is which is called a uh, transform matrix object. And this is basically the topic today about parenting the object. And because this is a matrices, so I'm putting into matrices list and put it into matrices. So now I have to select an object. So let's think about it. Let's just use our empties. And let's select our empty. So essentially nothing happens. But now, because this essentially is parented to our empty, so you can just uh, rotate that for 90 degrees. Like uh, rotated for 90 degrees. And more importantly, because it's a parenting, so what you can do is you manipulate everything. So instead of manipulates in the animation node, you manipulate everything within the viewport. So you can even um, like a RXX or R, uh, wait, RX, then you can rotate in such a way. So if you have watched the uh, bridge machine tutorial, you will understand why you actually need two offset matrices for such a function. But in such a case, I only need one node. Then I achieve the or then I achieve the function already. And it's more important that you can keyframe this thing very easily and rotate on X. And keyframe that. So it's very straightforward. It's actually true parenting. So the question is, okay, what's the magic behind this node? Or how to actually make this node? And this is today's topic. So this preset essentially is very, very easy. Actually, it's much easier than the other preset that I've mentioned in the past. Uh, and uh, remind you again that if you try to build a preset, it must be on your startup files. Um, and you need to go to the file and save the startup file for the node. And uh, I basically have two libraries right now. Anyway, so let's uh, start. Um, this preset is essentially super easy. The core concept is actually just the transform matrix because transform matrix node always work globally, as I mentioned in the um, bridge machine tutorial or local transform tutorial. But the issue is. Um, I need to consider whether I would like to change a single matrix or matrices. Uh, in this case, I would like to just use a group input and I will try both of them. The matrix list and the matrix. So basically, I will duplicate two of them. One is matrices and the other is matrix. And the next thing I need to consider is what's the transformation? Transformation must be the object of the transformation. So what's the object of the transformation? The object of the transformation is basically just the object matrix input. So you just put the word into the transformation and I'm going to put the, this object socket back to the initial place. And then finally output the matrices. And one goes to matrices, the other goes to matrix. And this is basically done. And this is all about it. Uh, you may wonder why I need these two sockets because for in a sub program, the individual socket will be either a list or a single value, but it will not auto confirm itself to a list or a single value, depends on your input. So you just have to prepare for two possibilities in such a case. Um, personally speaking, I think most of the time working with matrix lists using these nodes. 
but uh, just in case sometimes I would like to work with a single matrix who knows maybe this matrix will be used in a loop um, and so on so forth so this is basically kind of idea and this node you can just uh, name that as a um, transform matrix object tutorial and you can just call that up transform matrix object tutorial and it will basically do the exact function as I mentioned earlier uh, let's select our empties matrices into matrices and you can even scale that up and down so the reason I don't use the matrix math is because I need a transform matrix to affect everything globally at the same time so give you another example so if I have a distributed matrices and take a look with the 3d viewer so this is a matrices if you would like to change the scale of all these matrices you can just change its width or height or other things but uh, sometimes you might want to change everything globally with an object so in this case you probably can just do whatever that we did transform matrix object tutorial and then let's select our empties so by using these empties so you can decide how to actually rotate that so let's clear the keyframes you can scale that up and down so you scale that everything as a group but if you use the matrix mass what will actually happen it will scale each individual matrix and in such a case if I scale that up empty you can see how only the matrix has been affected so this is kind of difference but uh, I suppose you actually know so this is kind of rather dumb tutorial just, just to remind you basically there is a lot of transform series uh, like the transform mesh transform object transform spline transform vectors transform layer and the transform stroke um, it's possible that you do all of them but personally speaking um, I only do the transform matrix and the transform vector for some reasons uh, also the transform spline is possible something that you can potentially do with this preset so generally I have a three sets transform spline objects transform matrix objects as you see uh, and the transform vector object these are the only three nodes which I think is really in, really useful for such kind of function and I think basically this is it so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, and I'll probably see you next time bye bye <laughs>